Okay, so now we want to bring this all together. We started talking about albedo, and we talked about the amount of light being reflected from a surface. We also spoke about Earth's energy budget and positive versus negative feedback loops. We want to also make sure that we understand that the Arctic ice melting is a positive feedback loop. So that is what we're working here to prove. So we're not looking for this answer, answer, but on the other hand, making sure that we understand why this is the answer. So we're going to start by drawing a diagram with some ice. We have some ice and we have some water. So we have about half ice and half water. We have light coming in and hitting the ice and the water. And what, en what ends up happening is that through it all, we have about a total of about 21% um, of light reflected. Now I'm not drawing all the arrows of the reflected light. But we then also have a total of about 79% absorbed. Remember that's absorbed as heat. So note what's going on here. Now we have this heat in the water and what's the heat going to do? The heat is going to slowly melt away the ice. So then instead of the ice being out to this point, it gets pulled back to this point. So let's actually draw that over again so that we have now a smaller amount of ice and then more water. Again, we have light coming in. Although you notice how less light is hitting the ice and more light is hitting the water. And it ends up being that now instead of having 21% of the light reflected, we have say 16% of light reflected. This, of course, means that we have more light that is absorbed as heat. So that makes 84% absorbed as heat. Again, I'm not drawing the rest of these lines, just saying that there are going to be 84% of them that are heat and 16% of them that are reflected as light. Now this happens and we have, again, more heat. What happens to the ocean temperatures? They increase, they get even higher, and that actually continues to melt the ice and make more water as time goes on. So this is part of our understanding of a positive feedback loop. Now to actually write this as a loop, let's go ahead and take a new page. And take a look at something like our model looked like. So we had a thermometer. Thermometers have our mercury in them. And we have our lovely planet Earth. So we look down upon a planet Earth and we see our ice caps. Our ice caps actually started out kind of large. So if you look at that, we have large ice caps in the past. Then we have present that the ice caps have melted. And then we have a future prediction. So we don't know that this is going to happen, but scientifically, this is what our, our figures predict, that we're going to have smaller ice caps in the future. We also had in the past lower temperatures. And then in the present, we have higher temperatures, and then we have our future prediction up here. Okay, so note how it's getting warmer. They actually, by, by it, I mean the ocean temperature is getting warmer and that the ice caps are getting smaller. What does this look like in terms of a loop? Let's draw our arrow. So we see that 
as the temperatures rise, as the ocean temperature, rises, the ice caps melt because there is more heat. Could also put because there's more heat in the water specifically. Now, with more heat, with more actually, with with our ice caps melting more, what's going to happen? Well, let's see. As the ice caps melt, the ocean temperature rises beca because there is more water to absorb the heat. Now what is this? This is our positive feedback loop. So we see that with our ice area that it is going to get smaller and smaller and increasingly smaller and smaller over time. And this is why the the melting of the ice caps is speeding up.